Welcome ghouls and gals to the Haunted Library. Today, I will be reading Peppermint Dreams. So gather around, my little darlings. Book, come now, come. Peppermint Dreams, single, Spanish male, looking for an African goddess to spoil for life. Looking over the article one more time, Tomas let out a silent prayer and pressed submit. The dating scene was hard, but when you had standards, no. When you had guidelines, it was even harder. Must be around 5'5", 150 pounds, sable skin tone, and big, beautiful brown eyes. A man can't help what he likes. With 200,000 plus people, Jersey City had some of the most beautiful women to offer, but Tomas had a list. Running a hand through his tawny hair, he pushed away from the desk. The public library was usually deserted on Wednesdays. Today, they had a book sale, and the hustle and bustle was almost too much. What if someone saw me post that ad? He thought, keeping his head down as he made a beeline for the exit, the warm sun wrapped around him like a blanket fresh from the dryer. Taking a deep breath, stretching, he exhaled his apprehensions. Shoving his hands into his pockets, Tomas started back down Hill Street. The towering apartment building he called home was a brisk walk from the library. But knowing Bahati, she was already worried. Mother used to say that woman could worry a bump off a log, and that was saying something coming from Madre. Tomas thought, chuckling to himself. Pulling open the grimy glass door on the old brick building, he smiled at the song playing in the lobby. Aidan Reeves was the best violinist of the century, and that was a hill Tomas was willing to die on. Tapping his foot at the elevator, humming, he waited for it to open. The bell on the front door chimed again. Looking side-eyed, Betty came hobbling in. Rolling his brown eyes, he cursed under his breath. That woman is a good 30 years past her expiration date, Tomas mused. The door to the elevator clicked open. Hold the door, would you, Sonny? She rasped out. Clearing his throat, he walked in, plastering a smile on his face. He awaited for her to shuffle across the lobby. I could have gone up and sent it back down before she ever gets over here, rusted old bat. Thanks, dearie, she said, passing him. The smell of mothballs and baby powder permeated the small mirrored cube. What have you kids been getting into these days? The whole hallway smells like a candy shop. Her pale wrinkles overpowered her eyes. Her green orbs could barely be seen. Bahati has been experimenting with essential oils. It's supposed to be good for curing ailments. At this point, we're willing to try anything. I hope the smell isn't bothering you. No, no, dearie, I'm just a nosy old bird, she said, smiling. Her wrinkles lifted into a grin. At least she knows it, he thought. The door opened with a shrill buzz. Swallowing the acid he wanted to spew at her, Tomas held the door for Betty. Hurrying down the corridor before the mummy could ask him for an arm to steady herself on, he reached the safety of his apartment. Tomas had never been superstitious, but after getting this apartment to share with his wife, 225 was his lucky number. Smoothing down his shirt, he straightened his hair. Tomas unlocked the door. Bombasita, I'm home, he sang into the silent apartment. The smell of peppermint rolled out into the hallway. Locking the door, Tomas hung his keys on the silver hook. He did the salsa across the living room. The sunbeams lit up the small room. The red and gold rug glittered against the wooden floor. The walls were covered in hodgepodge frames filled with smiling people, filling the space with love. The dining room was tucked into a dimly lit corner. The mosaic table was surrounded by mismatched, brightly colored chairs. Bahati sat in a dazzling orange seat, her raven hair pulled back in braids. Mi cortezón, I am home. Sorry to keep you waiting. Leaning in for a kiss, Tomas smoothed her hair down. How are you feeling today? I have a good feeling about this treatment. Adding more peppermint oil to the diffuser on the table, he inhaled the mist. Tomas continued his salsa into the compact kitchen. 
It was only big enough for one person, but he would give anything to trip over Bahati while they cooked again. Her laughter made this apartment come alive. Guess what today is? Tomas called over his shoulder. Worldly Wednesday, he called in a sing-song voice. We are on F again. I picked France this time. Pulling the pot out from under the cabinet, it clanked softly on the stovetop. Booyah bee's coming up. A soft buzz rolled across the counter. Tomas wiped his hands on the yellow dishcloth, dropping it onto the counter. He picked up his phone. One new notification. Flame dating. Say Kai 22 sent you a message. Uh, I have to go to the bathroom. I'll be right back. Watch the fish broth for me, will you? Sliding his phone into his back pocket, he retreated to the safety of the bathroom. Guilt crept into his stomach as he opened up the app. He swore he wouldn't do this at home, but the notification set his soul aflutter. Dropping his pants, he sat on the toilet. Opening the app, he punched the mail icon. Holding the silver phone to his chest, he exhaled. Finding the courage to look at the screen, his brown eyes rolled over each word, the anticipation of the message building in his belly. Sikai. Hey, Diego, I saw your post. I would really like to meet you. They say romance is dead, but I feel like with you it would be very much alive. As a queen looking for her king to spoil for life, would you be free to meet me at Latte Magic at five today? Tomas reread the message, eyes trailing up to the clock on his phone, 4.15. Drumming his fingers on his thigh, excitement pushing the guilt from his mind, his fingers raced over the keyboard. Diego. Thanks for your message, Sikai. I would love to meet you today. Five is perfect. What will you be wearing so I can find you? The phone vibrated softly in his hands. Swallowing hard, he held in his giddiness. Sikai, I'll be wearing a white dress with an orange scarf. Swiping the app off his screen, Tomas relocks his phone. Washing his hands, he finger combed his brown hair down. Spraying his cologne, he rechecked his reflection, giving himself a wink. Tomas flipped off the light. Hurrying back into the kitchen, Tomas opened every cabinet and checked the fridge. Bahati, I can't believe this, he said, opening and shutting the cabinets again for show. I forgot the tomatoes. I have to run out to the store. Clicking the burner off, he covered the silver pot with a lid. I'll be back toot sweet. Kissing her forehead, Tomas winked at her before retreating into the living room. Latte magic was a brisk 30-minute walk from his apartment. The small hole in the wall was always lively with the same mass-produced hipsters that all thought they were John Locke. Tomas was willing to bet at five in the afternoon the EDM music could be heard around the block. Jogging down the street, he couldn't help but roll his eyes. There it was, the pulsating synthesizers. The choice of venue may be a red flag, but it was worth a shot. Tomas leaned against a tree on the sidewalk, scanning the large storefront windows for the future queen in question. Choking back a scoff of indignation, he peered into the window. Queen my ass, he thought, staring at the window. Her mocha skin and dark auburn hair was all wrong. I can't believe I ran out on worldly Wednesdays to meet this imposter, this, this self-professed queen. Shoving his hands into his pockets, he walked down the street towards the supermarket. I guess tomorrow will be stewed tomatoes. Maybe pasta primavera, he mused. Extra tomatoes aren't an unfixable offense. Maybe I'll get Bahati flowers, hoping to smooth the guilt gnawing at his heart. His phone buzzed in his pocket. He glanced at the screen. Tomas growled. Sikai. Hey, Diego, it's 510. Are you running behind? Diego. No, sorry. I walked past the window, and I can already tell you are not my type. But one man's trash is another man's treasure. Maybe one of those copy-paste guys in the beanie would like to take you home. Jamming the block button. Tomas circled the produce aisle for tomatoes, picking each one up in turn, inspecting it for falls. Only the best for Bahati. If I didn't know any better, I would think you were having a tomato judging contest. Rolling his eyes hard enough to sprain his optic nerve, whatever retort he had built in his mind died on his lips. The angel that stood in front of him in the emerald slip dress stole his breath. I'm looking for the perfect tomatoes for dinner. The best ingredients are the first step to the best food. Tomas smiled sheepishly. Oh, are you a chef? She asked, flashing a wolfish grin. Yes, I am Diego Futes, 
executive chef at El Pascador. Shaking her hand, he brought her hand to his lips, leaving a feather soft kiss on the back of her ebony hand. Giggling, a blush traveled up her cheeks, darkening her coal eyes. I'm Amani Monroe, oil painting extraordinaire. Um, my office is the fountain at North Lake Park. One day, I'll be as big as Theodore Robinson and I'll have one of those fancy glass wall studios. Oh, that's exciting. Rolling the tomato over in his hand, he traced her jawline with his eyes. I can't make any promises, but would you like to come to my home for dinner? We can discuss hanging your work in the foyer. I'm making bees. Um, I'm not sure I should. That sounds like a big meeting. I don't have anything put together. Amani rolled her dress between her fingers. You don't have a portfolio for your work? I mean, I have pictures on my phone. It is the digital age, no? Digital portfolios will be all the rage soon. Winking at her, another time of laughter floated from her plum-colored lips. Yeah, okay. I mean, you did find the best tomatoes. Following Tomas to the register, he made a side eye at her shoes. It was a 30 minutes walk home, but a cab driver might remember seeing a woman of this magnitude. I walked here, it's a beautiful evening. Would you mind walking back to my place or should I get us a cab? Walking is great. I don't have a car yet. Not because I'm not old enough. I'm 28, it's just cars are expensive. Laughing, she towed the ground. Her white converse had flowers embroidered on the sides the green silk ribbon matching her dress. Of course, it's better for the environment anyway. Dropping the tomatoes in the sack, he motioned towards the door. So, Diego, how long have you been a chef? Since I was tall enough to turn on the burners in Madre's kitchen, but she will tell you it wasn't edible for a while after that. He chuckled. I love that. Been called since birth. I'm the same way. I've been an artist since I was old enough to hold a pencil. It's the only thing I have ever wanted to do. The electric beat floated down the hill as they neared Latte Magic. Amani grumbled under her breath, casting a glance at her. Tomas scrunched his brows. I absolutely hate that place. It's like the necrotic aura is affecting the surrounding buildings. I couldn't agree more. The EDM is a soulless excuse for music. Looking into the window, C. Kai was leaning against the counter, giggling at a greasy man in a beanie. I knew she would do okay in that crowd, he thought. The anxiety turning in his stomach began to flare and gnaw at him as they got closer to home. Maybe this was a mistake. Maybe I should take a phone call? No. This is fate. I was handed this gift from someone above. Determination settling down the fear, Tomas pushed on home. The looming brick building was lit up brightly in the sun. The beautiful afternoon was going to make for a perfect night. Fate would only appear on a proper day after all. Pulling the door open, the familiar jingle of the bell gave him butterflies. Fancy meeting you again, young man. Who's your friend? Betty asked, craning her neck to take in Amani. An artist I met at the grocery, Thomas replied curtly, ushering Amani into the lift. It's nice to meet you, Amani said laughing. Thomas, do tell Bahati hello for me. Thomas? Amani asked, arching an eyebrow. Betty has Alzheimer's. Thomas used to live in the apartment. She comes over sometimes to say hi. Why, I never, I do not, Betty shouted, puffing up her chest. Yes, you do. Venom dripped from his words, his glare shutting her up. The doors to the elevator slammed in her reddened face. She really needs to go to a home. Amani eyed him cautiously. The elevator chimed again. The two was illuminated with a soft glow. Following him, Tomas fished his keys from his pocket, unlocking the door, ceremoniously hanging his keys on the silver hook, locking the door behind her. He worried his hands. Go ahead and pull up that portfolio. I will wash the tomatoes. Walking across the living room, he paused to kiss Bahati on the head. We have a guest. I met her at the store. She's nice. You'll like her, I promise. It smells like a peppermint cloud in here. Closing the gap, she paused. Oh, who is this? Amani acquired, squinting her eyes in the dining room. Pulling the cast iron pan back, Tomas swung it with all his might, smashing Amani on the back of the head. She stumbled forward, crashing into the table, hitting the floor with a thud. Tomas put the pan back on the stove. No, I didn't ruin it, see? Tomas insisted, rolling Amani over on her back. Blood gushed from her head, spilling onto the tile. Dinner will be a little late, Mikorazon. 
but I found the best tomatoes at the market. Stuffing a red onion into Amani's mouth, he duct taped her on her head several times, running his hand over the magnetic silver knife block hanging over the gray marble counter, Tomas selected the chef's knife. Pulling off Amani's white chucks, Tomas eyed her green socks. She really had it all down to a T, huh? Chuckling softly, he sliced her Achilles tendon, the flesh splitting open, blood spilling onto her green sock, soaking the cotton fabric. Turning his attention to the right foot, he mirrored the slice. Binding above her knees with silver tape, Tomas also added binding to her calves. Dropping her legs back on the floor, he whipped his hands in his... He wiped his hands on his jeans. One second, Mia Moore. I wasn't prepared for this to happen. It just happened so fast. She's perfect. Wouldn't you agree? As soon as I saw her, I knew she was the vessel we had been waiting for. Kissing Bahati on the cheek, he rushed off down the hall. Cranking the dial on the water heater up to 180, Tomas grabbed a box of lye that nestled in the corner. Flicking on the bathroom light, harsh white light flooded the room. Pulling back the floral shower curtain, he cranked the silver handle to hot. Steam filled the room, his gaze fogging the mirror. Picking up the drain plug by the chain, he lowered it into the clawfoot tub, careful of the blistering flow of water. Pouring the lye into the bath, he stirred it around with the wooden loofah. Hands on his narrow hips, he inspected his work. Retreating from the bathroom, he spared Amani a glance. The steady rise and fall of her chest ignited butterflies in his own. Kneeling by Bahati, he smoothed her hair from her brow. Chunks of black hair broke away from her scalp. Are you ready, mi corazón? Placing a gentle kiss on her gaunt cheek, cradling her to his chest, he stepped over Amani. Looming over the tub, he gave Bahati a gentle squeeze. It will be a little disorienting like last time, but just relax. Lowering her gently into the lie, her stiff limbs frozen into chair pose. The water began to fizz, filling the tub to the top. He turned the flow off. Folding his hands, he spoke a silent prayer. Closing the teal door behind him, Tomas leaned against it, gathering himself. Pulling the burnt orange makeup bag from the hall closet, he unzipped it and examining the contents. He smiled, dimples peeking out from beneath his scruff. Hoisting Amani up into the chair, her head lulled to the side. Wrapping a row of tape around her shoulders, he secured her to the chair. Selecting a flat silver cuticle purser, he removed her acrylic nails, dropping them into the table. Tomas opted for the gold polish, painting her nails to perfection. He ran a bronze finger over her ring finger. Flicking the cap off his sharpie, he sketched out an F. The swirling calligraphy ended in a heart. Adding drops of red ink to a little plastic cup, he attached the needle to his tattoo gun. Giving it a test purr, he ran the gun over the lines. Cleaning the excess ink off her finger, Tomas gently placed her hand back on her lap. Tilting her head back, he removed the onion, running a finger over her lips. Squeezing her flushed cheeks, her lips parted. Angling a silver scope, he slid it into her mouth, the light illuminating her throat. Running a cord beside the tongue compressor, he punched it through her vocal cords. Pulling the scope back, blood trickled around her lips. Letting her head loll back to the side, Tomas returned his attention to the kitchen. Turning the burner back on to medium heat, he added the tomatoes to the broth, stirring it. He hummed to himself. A soft groaning behind him brought a smile to the edge of his lips. Amani moved against the tape, binding her. Groaning, she tried to sit up. Eyes flying open, she looked around in panic, opening her mouth to scream, but no sound came. Bringing her hand to her throat, her brown eyes caught sight of her fingers, thrashing, tears streaming down her face. You're awake, Bahati. I know it's confusing right now. You just need to stay calm and come back into yourself. Leaning in, Tomas smashed a kiss onto her lips. After dinner, we can get you in the shower. You look like a fright tonight, mi corazón. It's Worldly Wednesday. Do you remember? If you feel up to it, you can help me prepare the bouillabies. Battling against the tape, her arms flailing wildly, Tomas sighed. Looks like you need more rest. Drawing midazolam into a syringe, he pushed the needle into her shoulder. Sleep now, Bahati. The fight draining from her body, she sagged against the tape. Turning back to the stove, he continued stirring the pot. I guess... If you're needing the recipe to disaster, it starts with two perfect tomatoes. Until next time.
Happy hauntings. Thank you.